Welcome to Startupville, the show where we discuss what it's like to build a tech startup and a startup ecosystem in a small city. I'm Mike Wolsfeld, our host is Dan Gold, and joining him today is Will Topping of Brand X Tech. Well, we started Brand X as a way to help people make decisions with better data. Currently, we've been chasing the agriculture market, so answering questions for farmers of should they uh, add more fertilizers and moisture in the ground, or is there grain molding in the grain bin? So a little device, plug it in, we call that a duck. If it quacks, you should go check on your grain. And Trevor Burgess of VoltSafe. So what we are, are doing is reinventing the electrical receptacle, and it would be essentially something to the effect of, if you want to conceptualize in your head, would be a meg, similar to the MagSafe, uh, except for AC dangerous current, in other words, whereas MagSafe is just low voltage DC. Mm-hmm. So essentially, if you're looking on a wall, you see our plug, it would be flat, and there would be the metal would be exposed, and the other side would come together and just magnetically pull together. And once connected, and only once connected, uh, does it release the flow of electricity. So in other words, it's child-proof, um, adult-proof, and uh, dummy-proof. In this episode, we discuss the many landmines of hardware innovation, managing founder relationships, and building the wall outlet of the future. Welcome to Startup Build. Startupville is brought to you by Innovation Place and Martin Charlton Communications. Let's roll it back for the both of you. There are so many questions that I'd like to ask, and I think the the best place for me to start is the connection between you both. Whoever wants to take this first, um, you were involved in VoltSafe, and then it's gone off to Vancouver, as I understand it. Um, firstly, was there some horrific falling out? Uh, secondly, I'm hoping not. And um, what was the involvement and the journey that he had to move to a different province? I'll let Will start with that. Yeah, no. Sure. Um, so Magnaplug actually started with an email from a uh, mutual colleague, AJ, who's part of this. Um, Arashan, he was tired of driving away with his block heater. I think his cord actually ripped through the front of his bumper. So he was like $300 of damage. He's like, cool. So if this thing is like 250 bucks, fine, it'll never happen again. And he couldn't buy it. So like any normal engineer, he's like, I'm just going to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, He brought me on when I was a fourth year student. Uh, We worked together for kind of a number of years on it. And then at one point, as most young engineers do, like I burnt out, like I I hit the couch. It was six months. And uh, so AJ did what he had to. Uh, He kind of moved it on. And uh, this is where kind of Trevor starts to come in. Because I think you two were high school friends, weren't you? Yeah, actually, so we were, uh, I guess what you'd call besties in uh, late high school. And uh, he almost was like a, my mom called him her uh, fifth son. Uh, So uh, we were pretty close. And then he went off to Saskatchewan and uh, started a family. And uh, we hadn't talked, uh, you know, too frequently. And so what happened with Magnoplug, uh, he had told me about the idea. And then um, him and... Will had uh, done that. And I was doing a, an MBA at the time um, at Cornell and Queens. And so I said, Hey, look, you know, I'll just, I'll give you any, you know, advice that I can give uh, if I feel like it's relevant and I uh, hope that helps. Um, so after a while, the, they managed to create a prototype, uh, which is the, the biggest step. Um, so proof of concept was there. Uh, and then um, towards, I guess, we hit some roadblocks with certification and kind of hit stumbling blocks and almost had an impasse. So what happened there was when we looked to uh, figure out, okay, how can we move this forward and and whatnot? um, I was like, okay, well, I can help from a distance, but if it's here, I can actually dedicate more time here. And Arash at the time uh, was moving back here uh, also. So uh, it just turned out that, and I I think my version of it was Will, was more looking to uh, do other startups. And also he was more interested in just kind of staying on and helping out in any way he could with the company, uh, which, you know, from time to time we, we, we talk and say, Hey, we've got this problem. And, oh, geez, you know, what do you think about this? So, uh, you know, consider him, you know, still part of the team. And that's, that's an awesome thing that there's, there's the relationship there. There's the, there's the knowing the roles and, and, and the timeline uh, supports it all. And there's, 
there's I mean, a number of times I've seen with startups that have evolved and moved away. Normally it's because of <clears throat> something else that's happened. So this is really nice to see as well. Yeah, um, there's, some, there's some really big pitfalls uh, that happen in startups, uh, I believe. And I think this is one of the things that is just not properly addressed for startups. Uh, everyone goes in with good intentions. Let's say you have four owners. Okay, you get this percent, you're going to do this job. You get this percent, you're going to do this job and whatnot. Uh, everyone with good intentions. And then partway through, you realize Joe isn't capable or he's lazy or whatever, but he's still got that percentage of the company. Um, so structuring it from, from the get-go differently um, is, is a much smarter way to do it uh, by offering things like a contributor or sweat equity agreement, which accrues as it's done, so after the work's done. Um, and this is what we actually switched to, and uh, it's been great. And that's, that is an interesting position. So from someone who has exited and done a, a number of different projects, does that, um, that basis, that relationship mean more knowing that here, here's the box, here are the lines around it, rather than the, the classic area that no one, no one ever talks about, that you're in that gap of um, we're, we're, we're feeling really awkward. Someone's got the idea over here, but they've worked on that. And how do we pull it apart without destroying the idea as well as the business and then have bitterness and then shock horror two rival products, which are very similar with slightly different code. How, you know, from your point of view, how do you see that as a dynamic? Um, I mean, that definitely happens. It's, it's almost worth noting that our Voltsafe started as Magnoplug and by changing the company is like one of the ways we actually did fix that. Um, so, I think when we moved it over, uh, it was mine and Arash's who actually had ownership of the patent and not even the company. Because oh. when two engineers try and make a company, it's not set up right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, companies are difficult. They're absolutely difficult and challenging. Yeah. Everyone is unique. Yeah. I've asked people this question before. When, if there's engineers or people who are at the idea stage, they, they identify a problem and they want to solve it. How is there ever the risk, and maybe from personal experience, is there ever the risk that um, an engineer is an engineer or someone's a scientist, but not particularly the best business person? And, and bringing a business person and a scientist or an engineer together is kind of the perfect mix. Yeah, that, that's absolutely it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, actually, a, a side note on that. Uh, when we were first early on, IRAP helped us out at kind of a government program, and we were able to hire... Uh, Mitch and Mallory, which were two fourth year economic students. Yep. Um, it's now five years later and I co-founded Magnoplug, or not Magnoplug, co-founded Brand X with Mitch. Mitch has an MBA from our university here in entrepreneurship. So I solved the problem of not knowing how to do business by finding a person who probably knows how to do business. Yeah, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head there. Um, that's the, the thing I've learned in the many different startups uh, I've done over the years is Surround yourself and bring in, um, you know, the, the weaknesses that you have. Um, so you want to surround yourself with those strong people early. Uh, if you try to navigate it all on your own, yeah, you might get there, but you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way and it's going to be painful and it's going to burn you out. Um, there is, with startups, you go home and you're still at work. Um, so it goes home with you you know, it, it, it's everything. So it's hard to uh, separate yourself a bit and hand off certain things um, to other key people. And then they can carry a lot and shoulder a lot of the weight early on, especially. I think that's really important. I'm looking at this from the point of view of a Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, even a Canada West point of view. What do you see, Will, as the as the thing that keeps you here? What's, what's the attraction for Saskatoon? Oh, I, I love this city. We're, we're such a diverse crew. And actually, Mag, uh, McDonald's even figured this out early on, where we were some of the first cities to get those touchscreen displays where you walk in, you can order your meal without talking to a person. Because, Is it because we don't like people? No. It's, we're used to driving <laughs> on roads for such long distances. We're on our own. We might listen to a podcast or the radio. Uh, but we just don't like talking to people. So we adopt touch screens rather than that relationship. This is tongue in cheek, I'll grant you, but is there something there? Huh. I never thought about it like that. Um, I really enjoy Saskatoon because it's big enough that it has everything I need. There's always someone I can talk to that knows something. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to be a medium-sized fish in a medium-sized pond. Yeah. yeah. 
I would argue that, um, so I grew up in Chilliwack, which is about an hour east of Vancouver. And I would argue that Saskatchewan, because it's, uh, you know, even in the city, um, but more rural, is more friendly, uh, more willing to talk to each other than, you know, walking the streets of, I hate to say it, and I love Vancouver, but, you know, Vancouver or other big, uh, really urban cities, people just kind of put their head down and go, go on their way. Um, so I, I think it's actually, you know, more friendly. Yeah, I, uh, so I spent right after university two years in Ottawa working at Cisco. Um, and I halfway through did a social experiment on this. I just walked down the street and I just said hello to people. And of course, I, I look like this. How many people stared at you? Well, none. That's the point. Okay. <laughs> they actually looked away. <laughs> and uh, I got more no thanks in Ottawa than I did in Saskatoon, almost at about a 1.5 <laughs> to 1. Just a hello, no thanks. Wow. I mean, yeah. in, in, in London, if you say hello to a stranger, they'll wonder what's wrong with you. That's, that's, well, that's the extreme like. case. Yeah. So welcome yeah. to Canada. And I think one of the issues, especially in Vancouver and, and maybe in Ottawa a little bit too, is um, the amount of you know, homeless people and drug addicted and whatnot. So people uh, have a propensity f- for thinking that if someone is coming up to them, they're asking for something, asking for a handout, asking for something. So they just try not to have eye contact and continue on. I'm, I'm yes. guilty for that. You know, uh, yeah. I, yeah. It's being in your own safe zone, effectively, and and the world over there are there are social issues that you know there are companies and startups that are looking at how those issues are addressed and integrating technology and services to improve those situations. Um, something I found really interesting when I was last in Vancouver was uh, one of the people from the communications industry said to me, "This is a wonderful place to work, but what you'll find is uh, it will." entirely be when you're working on project who you know very clicky with trying to get projects moved forwards and if you come new to the market it's it's got those barriers where i found with saskatoon people coming new to the market it's okay well who are you are you a nice person uh what is it you do and there's more interest in the human side of it I totally agree with that. Um, once we actually got Brandex running, we had an office we could show people. I started doing tours and like the accountant came in and he hooked us up with two clients of, hey, you should talk to these people. I think they can actually solve your problem. And that kind of comes back to the medium-sized fish and the medium-sized pond. People like talking to that. You know, they might find a service somewhere else in Toronto or Vancouver, but if they can just come into Saskatoon and talk to the local boys from PA, well, hey, we can do that too. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at bigger cities like uh, well, any bigger city, what tends to happen is it either becomes clicky or, uh, in this case, um, the bigger fish uh, tend to get all the attention. And yeah. they, they tend to drive a lot of it, too. Um, so the little guys trying to scrape up, hey, over here, um, pretty much it's like, well, are you a billion-dollar company like Hootsuite or you know, Lululemon, uh, well, no, we're just starting up. up. It, it's a little tougher. Oh, now, the environment in Vancouver is actually quite good with respect to a lot of shared spaces um, for startups, uh, and it's great, um, and it's growing, and I, I like seeing that. Also, um, integrating and, and promoting a lot more women in startups, which is great. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's an interesting dynamic. So when we come to what, what you do as uh, organizations, um, I'm really intri- intrigued about this duck thing because my alarm when I get up in the morning is ducks <laughs> quacking because I think it's funny. Uh, I'm not going to ask you why ducks particularly, um, but when you looked at the problems that were ahead of you or problems that people were encountering and you wanted to address that need, how did you even think, okay, well, I've gone from working on this project and, and Brandex is completely different. How do you, I mean, maybe it's the engineer's mind, but how do you go, I want to solve another problem. I want to go over here rather than just go, well, you know, what? I like this space. I'm just going to stay over here. Well, I mean, I didn't jump from VoltSafe to Brandex. There was four startups in the middle there. Okay. So between in rapid fire, Peachy Printer to mm-hmm. Create Cafe over to Aura up in Collabs and then Brandex. So I guess three. So okay. Fourth being brand X. Okay. So let's even take it back from that. When it comes to um, having a company and having different iterations, that's one thing. But when you go from company startup to startup to startup to startup, what is what keeps you motivated? 
I think the easiest way to explain that is with the latest one. Um, I made brand decks with the ducks because it's something I knew I could do. And this was the first one where I actually became the CEO. Normally I was joining on with someone else's problem because I knew I could bring them to a solution, mm-hmm. kind of help them along, take that kind of CTO, VP engineering kind of role. Uh, but to, when making ducks, I, I chose an animal because it's, they're just there. No one really bugs ducks. Uh, you know, they're kind of simple. They got, you know, they're not a, a supercomputer. They're not an AI, but we can put some stuff in their backpack and our backpacks, the interface board. Now suddenly people can talk about it. Oh, I'm just going to put a duck on my grain bin and here's my, you know, pond app and look at all the data I have in my pond. And it's a lot more approachable and it gets people into tech that aren't normally in tech. Do you think that, that friendly approach, approachable side is, has been the key to the, to the growing success of that organization? Mm, partially. I, I mean, I do it. It's obviously got to solve a problem firstly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then it helps other people phrase their question in a way that we can work with it. Because they say, oh, I want the duck with a backpack of a pH meter or a dissolved O2 in water and temperature. And I'd like it to talk to me over Wi-Fi. So, okay, you want a Wi-Fi duck with this in its backpack and here's the dashboard. What's next? That's very smart. Very smart. I'd like to add to uh, what Will was saying um, about Will actually even. So there's, I, I believe there's people out there that either have that kind of entrepreneurial drive or don't. And those people tend to like to attack problems that are very challenging um, or, or deliver something that they feel is of, of value uh, to the society. And Will has that, clearly has that, you know, that excitement for the next thing and, you know, things that are challenges and solving things um, to the point. So that some of us have that where we just really want to be doing more than one thing. It's too monotonous otherwise. Um, and, you know, I, I'm a little bit uh, similar there. Uh, it was just, you want to sink your teeth into something and make it your own. Um, and you're willing to shoulder the weight and the, the stress that comes along with it. Although there are times where you just want to curl up in a ball and cry a little. Could, do you think that either of you, and I want to get on to um, Vault Safe and what it is and talk about it in just a second, but do you think there's something about, there's something within each of you that you couldn't just go off and, I mean, you had your, your period of working for Cisco. Could, could you find it within yourself to go, hey, here's a nine to five job, get it done, sit there day in, day out. What would that make you itch inside or is it, I'd be happy with that. I'd be content. I personally, I, uh, I, I would not be content long-term. I do love doing things like construction or or this and that something physical uh, because generally I sit on my butt all day and stare at a computer. Um, but I tell you, I've had, I've had a job since age 11, uh, doing early morning, uh, uh, province and you know the big newspaper and had job all throughout my ha- my life and that just solidified that I want to be you know driving my own destiny um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the nine to five uh, I think it's great people that can do it um, but they because they get a little more security and they mm-hmm. get a little more freedom too when they go home they can you know shut it off whereas uh, an entrepreneur you know it's just like this constant ding, 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 ding alert thing uh, where it's not always pleasant. But I tell you that, you know, the sweet is always sweeter, but the bitter, I tell you, the, the lows can be really low. One day you're doing amazing and then the next day you get bad news about, you know, something to do with your company or prospective sales and you feel like, okay, we're going to have to close the doors. So it's a real bipolar type thing. When it comes to uh, entrepreneurism, where do you, how would you describe it in your case? I mean, both of you, it seems to be maybe slightly different. Um, go ahead, Will. Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting because uh, I, I remember actually even blowing up at Trevor once in WhatsApp, just this big long wall of text because I thought he should be doing something differently. I was wrong. Um, and uh, it's, well, yeah, sorry about that, Trevor. Uh, no, 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 it's just, uh, honestly, the, if there's no if there's no conflict, like I'm wrong all the time too. We're all wrong. Um, it's about being passionate and making you know your argument and what you're feeling at the time, getting it out, airing it, letting it simmer, and then moving forward. Um, and there's never been any hard feelings or anything with respect to any challenges we've ever had. 
Yeah, love you I'm going to give you a hug for that. Yeah, I think that was a moment. I'm so glad yeah. to share that moment. But just just on that, I mean, uh, there's differences between someone owning a business and someone being an entrepreneur. So how? What's your experience of entrepreneurism specifically, away from it being tech or a startup itself? Uh, I mean, I've always kind of been that guy to just like sell stuff out of my locker in high school, um, even in university. Like I. I figured out that if I needed this part, if I bought 10, I could sell eight and get two for free. So like that, I was that store in the university and took about the student society about a year to put it into the student society. So there was a glorious year where I was making money. <laughs> Trevor, how about you? Um, I think the difference between entrepreneurs and um, business owners, I'm just thinking of you know, small business owners, uh, entrepreneurs have more of an appetite for uh, exploration and discovery. Um, that's what really drives them and excites them. Uh, where, and also, you know, the fact that they're, they're their own boss and whatnot, but I think business owners are more excited by, uh, you know, slow, steady, you know, growth and, you know, a more mature type business and something that is more based around, okay, well, I am my own boss. So I got that. I'm not working for the man. Um, and I need to make this profitable and whatnot. So entrepreneurs tend to be more head, head in the clouds type people, I think. And, and, and just tell me more about Vault Safe because I'm, I'm really intrigued. I'm from the UK. I've got a, you know, a 13 amp plug with, you know, with earth and every socket is switched. And I come over here with 110 ish. Uh, I say ish because it really is ish. Um, and they're, they're not switched sockets, which really surprised me. Um, I know that obviously 240 is going to give someone a hell of a jolt compared yeah. to 110. And yeah. that's why we're switched. But, you know, tell me what your product does that, you know, will make people's lives easier. Yeah. Um, so our, our product does has some core competencies um, that are around safety. Um, so really, that is the main thing we're addressing. Um, and what our technology requires is essentially a, a small, you know, uh, printed circuit board, a PCB. And so we can actually create a little computer, whatnot, and, and different pieces and parts uh, inside the plug. So, and which is not that far off from a GFCI, which we're very familiar with, ground fault circuit interrupters. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, we actually create a plug that is entirely safe. Uh, you don't have to worry anymore about someone sticking anything into it. It's entirely safe. And only when it's connected uh, does it connect. And also this, the convenience of just being able to dangle a cord behind your couch and it just connecting. And then also if you trip, it releases uh, very easily. So the other thing with that is being that we have a PCB board or a PCB, we actually can do a lot of cool things. So we can, you've probably seen these devices, uh, you know, you've got a power metering external plug you plug in mm -hmm. or something that you can control with Wi-Fi. Well, we can add these type of fun this type of functionality at such incredibly minimal cost because we already have the computer board there. We've already paid for it. It's already done. Um, so the benefits that people can have are just being able to have your entire home done up like this and be able to figure out, okay, that's, so that's uh, socket had eight dollars and 28 cents worth of power drawn out of it. You can see machines that are hooked up that maybe their motor is on the way out and it's drawing too much amperage and costing you too much. Uh, we also um, have an engineer here that uh, worked at Tesla uh, and he is currently working on an initiative that we're doing with the government too, um, which is taking and doing all the power metering and developing our own solution and embedding um, the different types of, you know, phase shift with voltage. Um, and you know what, for layman's terms and trying to explain that and cross that bridge, I'd say probably Will would be better at explaining, you know, the different three types of power and how that affects bills and stuff. Well, I'm not too sure if I want to dig into that too much. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, one of the biggest draws or pulls for me towards Magnaplug, if I could be punny, um, is actually the constant pull force. Um, so like a few of the friends of mine who are I mean, having troubles with life, perhaps, uh, 
even just carrying a load of groceries and being able to kind of just like nudge it in. Mm -hmm. And then you also solve the problem of the prongs being too loose and falling out. So it's kind of constant, not too hard, not too little. It's that Goldilocks zone of just plugging it in. So it's not only that, it's the fact that because it's logic controlled, you're eradicating arcing and then making it safe from fire risk. That too. Yeah, it's essentially our product can be GFCI, AFCI. Um, and, you know, when you have prongs and you plug it in, like Will's done um, empirical testing on this, you have a gap. By the time your light turns on when the prongs go in, you can still stick your finger th and touch the metal prongs in that gap, especially in North America. Yeah. Uh, Brit, uh, UK is so much better. They, they're very smart. They put even insulation on the yep. back half of the plug. Um, and uh, the switch switch is brilliant. And That's right, because Tom Scott, who's got a YouTube channel, who I highly recommend everyone going to look at, uh, Tom Scott did this video on um, the 13 amp plug and socket arrangement. But I'm really excited by what you're both doing. Um, as time is getting along and it's nearly beating us, um, I'd like for people to be able to have an opportunity to connect with you both. And so if it's possible, what I'd like to do, uh, Trevor, starting with you, is just, just ask uh, for a couple of contact details so that people could get in touch via the company. Sure. Um, our website is voltsafe.com. Um, the name of our actual company is Lab498. Um, so when it comes to contacting us, reaching out, uh, you can go on our site. There's a link there. You can even, um, I don't mind uh, you you know, emailing me directly at trevor at lab498.com, just T-R-E-V-O-R at lab and then the number's 498. Um, and uh, we also have a phone number, I believe, listed on the site. And uh, yeah, we've got some interesting stuff and interesting um, items and requests for hospitals and uh, ambulances and even uh, autonomous vehicles like, like the Tesla EV charger. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting. And we're actually right now in the process of trying to change the uh, UL Underwriters Laboratory standards um, because the standard has been just this for a plug in the, in the house has been the same forever. And Will. So uh, we're still kind of a newer company. We have a beta website online. So you can go to brandxtech.ca, B-R-A-N-D-X-T-E-C-H, slash beta. If you want to click around and see the grain cable that's online, so you okay. can tell when our coders are on fire or giving us the cold shoulder. <laughs> and then finally, my email is will at brandxtech.ca. Please say that you're going to use the duck as such a device for your brand building as well, because it just sounds like a really brilliant, cool, relatable idea. So actually another half of the company is from Prince Albert, which is in Northern Saskatchewan. And one of them there is an old high school friend who's been doing pixel art. So just <laughs> low resolution images mm -hmm. of these ducks with like a Wi-Fi visor on. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have to take a look on the beta website think, for that. I think duck is brilliant. Um, and you know what? It's funny. It's not far off from the branding we're actually doing in the background right now. Uh, for our product. So Volt Safe is the technology inside mm -hmm. of, of our product. Um, however, our product will be named Pear, P-E-A-R, you know, a play on P-A-I-R also, yeah. because it literally just pairs together. And we want to create a word that's different than saying, hey, can you plug that in? No, can you pair that? Yeah, that is, that is smart. That is smart. Um, I would like to carry on much, much longer, but time has beaten us. Um, Trevor and Will, I'd like to thank you both so much for joining me on Startupville. Thank you. Thank you very much. Startupville is brought to you by Innovation Place, growing the tech sector in Saskatchewan, Canada, and produced in partnership with Martin Charlton Communications at wetellyourstories.ca. The show is produced by me, Mike Wolsfeld, and our host, Dan Gold. Our theme music is from GG Riggs and Reactor Productions. Learn more about us and our guests at innovationplace.com slash startupville and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Startupville Pod. See you next time on Startupville.